and Jenny from Heart of a Mother. One of the most common questions I hear from homeschoolers is how do I juggle all these different aged kids in one school, right? It's the one room schoolhouse and it is challenging to bounce from grade level to grade level, from toddlers to teenagers. There's no doubt about it. It's one of the hardest things about homeschooling. There are some things that we can do to make it a little bit easier. There still are going to be those days where it is overwhelming and it is too challenging and we just do the best that we can. But I think there are lessons for our children in those moments that are more valuable than making it work just perfectly. So these are my five tips for juggling the needs of all the kids. First, the first thing is a mindset to look at the big picture and the long term rather than just today. If you have five kids, there's no way that you can meet all of their needs in one day. But if you look at the month and did you meet most of their needs within a month's time, then you're doing great. I've mentioned this before, but when I had a toddler and was worried about their eating um, and that they were eating just, you know, crazy meals, I was told by a nutritionist to look at one week's worth of meals and see if it was a more balanced diet than just the goldfish that they would eat for lunch. And that was the only thing they ate that day. Um, looking at the bigger picture can help with juggling all the things. And so looking at the long term with our kids of varying ages and giving ourselves the grace to spread it out is similar to the balancing act where one day we're going to drop that ball, but the next day we pick that up and we drop a different ball. That's okay. That is one way to successfully homeschool a variety of kids. It's not a bad thing because if you look at the long term, you look at a month's worth, a year's worth, maybe a week's worth you're still probably, probably meeting most of the needs of most of your kids in that bigger time frame. Um, one specific tip for that that I heard from some big families is that they will make sure to designate a day of the week for each kid that they focus in on that kid and give them attention and help them with what they need. So if you have five kids, you can do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or some other uh, iteration of that where Monday is Susie's day. And I am in my mind, whether she knows it or not, going to make sure that Susie is my priority that day. And then everybody gets a little bit of mom. Another way to do that is my second tip, is to put the basic needs of the youngest people in the family first. It's scriptural, right? The least will be first. And those little people really do need our attention and our um, care first before we can care for the bigger ones and the bigger ones need to learn that. A wise, wise mama taught me that the baby is the lesson. If you are trying to do a math lesson and get through it with the fifth grader, but the baby is screaming on your hip, begging to be fed, stop the math lesson. That fifth grader needs to learn that the baby and their basic needs are more important than the math lesson. That's an extreme example, but Putting the youngest first and giving them your attention first can really, really help the rest of the day go well. So sit down and read a story with the toddler before you try to teach the math lesson. And I bet that things will go more smoothly because they have been, their tank has been filled, right? They've gotten their mommy time. Okay, thirdly is a big thing in my house is to teach independence. As soon as my kids possibly can, they do a lot of stuff on their own. They do their own hygiene and care with me checking. They do their own schoolwork, as many things as they can with me checking and being available for questions and help as needed. But teaching your kids independence when they're ready for it can help you manage the kids who just can't be independent. Obviously before they're reading, there's not a lot of school they can do by themselves. But once they are reading, you can take off with some of that opportunity for giving those kids independent subjects and balance the independent work with the mommy heavy work. You really can't choose materials or curriculum that's gonna require mom intensive for every kid all day long. There's just are, are not enough hours in the day. They need to be taught to work independently. Um, little ones can even be taught to play independently. If you have a designated spot and designated toys that are only available during school hours and they are maybe you set a timer for five minutes and say you get to play with this special toy for these five minutes 
um, and you can play longer if you want, but this is your opportunity, then you're teaching them independence at a young age and that'll give you a few uninterrupted, hopefully, minutes to work on science with a bigger kid or um, another subject. So teach independence and, and foster that. The fourth is especially targeted at the little ones who are younger than kindergarten. So especially your preschoolers, your um, pre-kindergartners, or even the kindergartners who are kind of done with their schoolwork but you still have other stuff to do with the other kids because they don't have a lot, is involve them and keep them close. Make them feel like they're a part of the work. Give them a workbook that they can scribble in. Um, give them paper and crayons and have them sit next to you and ask them to draw different things and give them pretend assignments and make them feel involved and close. If you're reading a story aloud to a second grader about, I don't know, maybe you're reading Mr. Popper's Penguins, tell the two-year-old to take a black crayon and draw some penguins. They feel like they're learning too and they're a part of the school. Even when you're doing chores throughout the day, involving your kids and keeping them close is a really helpful strategy. Even though it's easier to do it by yourself, it's easier to send them away and to tell them to leave you alone so that you can get it done. Involving them is, infinitely better in most circumstances and really will help you to accomplish more and be more peaceful because their needs are being filled just by being with you and just by feeling like the big kid helping mom. So involve your kids and keep them close. You can apply that to older kids as well and the teenagers and the middle school kids. If you can't sit down to work on a particular um, subject with them, if they are needing you and you're just not available, have them help you with whatever task you're doing because it'll go faster. The older kids can really be helpful. And instead of saying, wait, 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 say, come help me finish folding this laundry and then we will get down to your work. And they learn that skill of that um, sometimes you have to help other people before they can help you. Okay. The last one is, uh, the last tip is what everybody always defaults to. We want to combine the school subjects. We want everybody to do family style learning and everybody do the same thing and then it'll be easier. Yes, that is a fantastic thing to do for all content area subjects that you possibly can. Doesn't always work for every family because of the different personalities and temperaments and skills of each kid. But if you can do some of that and do all the same history or all the same science, do it. You can't really do all the same spelling as easily. You can't do all the same math. Those are skill-based subjects that are really hard to combine unless you have kids super close in age. But if you can find a way to combine other things, go for it and make it work. Now, I have two kids really close in age who cannot be combined for anything because they're too competitive and they get too upset over the other kid's accomplishment over them. And it varies on which kid is upset, <laughs> but I can't, they can't do the same work. So I can't combine them. We, um, I combine them kind of sneakily and I will read aloud to them and say it's one kid's work, but the other kid's in the room. And so they're both getting it. Uh, but that doesn't work in that circumstance. But there are many great resources and ways that you can combine kids, especially in a morning basket type situation. Um, we have a whole Zoom call recorded on the YouTube channel about morning baskets, and I'll share more of my morning basket another time. Um, but that is a great way to possibly combine some kids in some subject areas and simplify your life rather than every single kid doing every single subject separately. So those are my tips for juggling the kids and the needs of all the different ages to look long term at the big picture. That's kind of the perspective and the mentality that will help bring peace to that anxiety over meeting everyone's needs. Um, just meet the needs of the youngest child first, their basic needs first. The baby is the lesson the toddler needs your attention first and your big kids will learn that scriptural lesson. Uh, teach independence as soon as you can. Give them the opportunity to be a big kid and to do things on their own um, with your guidance and with your availability. And then, especially the younger and older and in between too, involve them in what you're doing and keep them close. Um, the little ones love to pretend to do schoolwork. The big ones love to, the middle ones love to help you with chores um, and the big ones too. And then of course, combine the subjects, especially if they're content area based um, and not skill based that you can, that work for your family so that you can simplify um, your day because you do not have enough hours in the day 
to meet the needs of every single child every single day if you have more than one kid. Even if you have one kid, sometimes that's not possible with the other demands on our lives. But uh, that's not the goal, right? The goal is growing in virtue, growing in knowledge, and growing in wisdom throughout the day in all of our family. And so we have to learn to be flexible and do those things. I hope that these tips help. I hope that you gain some peace from trying some of these and creativity in accomplishing what you're setting out to accomplish and what you feel is the priorities for your family each day and each week and each month. Please visit me on heartofamother.net. Please, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. I would love to see you in our Facebook group and chat with you there sometime. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.